Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Master of Punk's Tamer Sages, the king of ring himself. But your boy Thicky Smalls, Gerard Michaels, in the house. What happens in Vegas makes us 10 minutes late on Monday. What's up? It's your boy, Gerard Michaels, Thicky Smalls himself, the Vanilla Gorilla here. And it's Monday. It's 2 o'clock. It's Gas Digital. That means you're here for Slick and Thick. And as always, at my right, at 6 foot 3, 200 pounds, and every one of them is a problem, the king of the ring, the master of punks, the, tam- the tamer of sages, the CEO of the RNC, Slick Mickey Gall. Wow, I almost didn't get through, though. I didn't get through. Yo, I'm coming but off of Vegas. It's been a long weekend. I'm coming off of Vegas it's here, man. It's been a long-ass week. Huh? But we have a remarkable show today, an exciting show today, because we have a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame with us today, a guy who won the championship in two different weight classes, three-time heavyweight champion, Mr. Michael Moore. What's hey, going on? Hey, welcome, champ. Welcome, 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 welcome. What's going on? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, this is... so. The first heavyweight champ on the, the show. The heavyweight huh? champ, man. Awesome. The That's baddest cool. man you. on the baddest man on the planet. First Let's, light heavyweight used champ be, as used well. Used to be. Used to be. You, you don't know, as you get older, that shit just deteriorates a little bit. That's all. Yeah, but you're the champ for life. Okay, champ I, for I life. can accept that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you. Hell let's yeah. Yeah. let's get right into it. What did it feel like to be crowned the baddest man on the planet? That's so long ago. It's just you know, it was that was a big part of my life coming from Manessa, Pennsylvania, winning the heavyweight championship of the world. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was big. It was really big. Yeah, but you know, you beat a nobody, Evander Holyfield. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. just just another, you know, a can, as it were. Mm. Standing in there, you're looking across. Mickey has a great saying, you know, because I mean he's he's one of the only guys, if you don't know, in, in history who uh second pro fight he got into the UFC he's he's had his entire pro career in the UFC and you know got in at a young age and and uh as you like to say Mick uh idols become your rivals right, right? right. what, what yeah. was it what was it look standing across uh, staring across at, at Evander Holyfield as you're looking there well leading up to it you know you have promotional things you got to do it's like wow I'm with Evander Holyfield and like Michael Moore you know at that time it was unbelievable, mm-hmm. but once I carried on in my career, you know, I was I was meant to be there. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. When you followed a very similar path to Evander, a lot of people don't know he, he was yep. he was a light heavyweight, a cruiserweight even, right before. Yes, he he went to cruiserweight. I bypassed the cruiserweight division. I mm-hmm. was tired of losing weight. As yeah. a light heavyweight, I used to walk around 220 pounds and get down to 173. Wow, <sighs> that's yeah. rough. Yeah, it was big time. That's rough. rough. We've talked about yeah. this. G, G doesn't mind losing weight, though. No, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fast, uh, yeah fasting yeah, is my like, favorite what? pastime. It's true. It's you know, I, I did a, I did a low intensity uh, bagel dip into cream cheese this morning. It was fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah, steady state carbo loading. Did it help? I f- f- fantastic. Spikes the sugar. You know, gives you a blow. Me and Mick do. We we do talk about this though. Um, often on the show, we've talked about this with a bunch of fighters we've had on Rashad Evans. It seems sometimes there may be an advantage to being a smaller but faster heavyweight that doesn't have to cut weight, or not even heavyweight in any weight class where you don't have to cut as much. Right, like a Frankie Edgar. Like a Frankie Edgar, where you're, you know, whatever you're giving up in size, you're making up for in speed and cardio. And kind of pop in you, not having to deplete yourself through that weight cut, especially the way, like, I don't know if, if that was exactly. I know most boxers tend to be kind of on weight. Mm-hmm. Like UFC fighters, we the day before were sucking out oh, a yeah. tremendous amount of weight. Boxers too. They do the same oh, thing. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Don't don't let them lie to you. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah leading so that's leading up to the point of weighing in. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, how, how much would you typically drop on like the like the night before or the day of weigh-ins? I'd probably take five pounds off. Okay. You know, I, I didn't want at the the night before the fight, I was on weight. But leading up to that, oh man, it was bad. Bad. Yeah. Bad. What would you just you just go you'd get like fatter, like you just eat everything and, and not worry about it or No, I would your... eat I would eat healthy, but I it was just portions. 
Yeah, the That's, portion. Yeah, 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 the portions. Yeah, gotta get all the calories we're burning. You gotta, you know, put it, put that fuel in. Yeah, I, I, I changed it up. I've learned over the years how I eat now and stuff like that. My breakfast is my dinner, and my dinner is my breakfast, because I got the rest of the day to work it off. If I eat early in the morning, like I had, I had a, what did I have this morning? I had two pieces of sushi with eel. And I had uh, what's the noodle thing? Pad Thai. Mm. I had that. That was for, breakfast. That was breakfast. Nice. I can get on board with that. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And then I got the rest of the day to work that off. You know, it's like uh. a like a car, the car and gasoline. Right. Fill it up. You got the rest of the day to drive it. So you're just eating twice a day. You're eating breakfast sometimes, and dinner. Sometimes I eat twice a day. Sometimes once. Okay. But I can't. You know, it's I got a problem. I can't taste or smell. Uh oh. Uh -oh. At all. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. How'd that happen? Uh, sinuses. Sinus infections. You, that's not what you thought. No, nah, I thought it was you? a Wuhan sinus infection. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's eating pangolins out there in the Wuhan no. wet market. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, right. Dude, no. Yeah, he survived Evander Holyfield and George Foreman, but yeah. that bat, that bat soup got him. Yeah, right. <laughs> 17 years I haven't been able to taste or smell. Oof. Yeah. Damn. That pad thai is wasted on you. Oh no, I, I fed it up. <laughs> yeah, would have would have made Vegas a little more tolerable. That's for sure. But nah, that's neither here nor there. So the uh, <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, the the I'm biggest. To get it. I'm trying to get it. I'm, I'm trying no. to think about it. No, if you can't explain it, listen. Nah, listen. No. I, I got it. I got. You don't know what it okay. is. You can't afford it. I got it. I got a feeling the gas digital people get where I'm, where I'm putting down <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> You what? You are one of only four people in yep. the history of Marquis de Queensberry boxing yep. to hold the light heavy and the heavyweight title. Yep. You got Michael Spinks, yep. Roy James Jones Jr. James Tony, and you know some people's pound for pound goat Roy Jones Jr. Yep. That's got to be nuts, man. And and not that you know I'm not, I grew I, up with all these guys fighting. Get out of here! Oh yeah, with with uh, me, Roy. All these, we were on the Olympic, the uh, United States boxing team. Really? When we was growing in up. Atlanta? Was that Atlanta oh, 96? No, it was in Colorado, 86, you said? Oh, 96. Wasn't that Atlanta? Am I wrong? No, no, no. When 86 is when I, uh, I was an amateur. I'm yeah. talking about when we were amateurs. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we used to fight together all the time. Not each other, but on the United States boxing team. Wow. Yeah. You turned pro after that, right? Around, around 86, 87? I turned pro in 88. 88. 88, okay. 88 yes. Okay. Yep. That's pretty, and that's a pretty quick time to get into the title. 94, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no. I, well, thir um, well, 30, you with, what, you light, 35 and 0? Well, as a light heavyweight, I, I won the, heavy, the light heavyweight title in my 11th pro fight. Oh, right, right, right. I'm thinking about the heavyweight yeah, one when he, yeah. when he beat Evander, yeah. Um. When I beat Evander, I had uh, I had probably three fights, four fights to lead up to that fight. At heavyweight. At heavyweight, yes, okay. yes. I mean, th think about the time where you were competing in the heavyweight division of boxing. This is, has to be one of the pinnacles of the heavyweight division. I mean, you got Evander Hol Holyfield, you've got you know Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowe, and then eventually Lennox Lewis. Yep. You know, obviously you Klitschko fought George Foreman, you got Klitschko. The, the, the so cream of the crop. We, oh, yeah. That was there. And people talk about how come you never fought Tyson. Tyson was locked up when I was champ. Mm. So it was never, it never materialized. I think your that. styles would have been interesting. That would have been very interesting. Yes. Yeah, he could probably have knocked the <laughs> out of me. What you talking about? <laughs> Keep it real. Oh, man. You think? That's Absolutely. how you feel? Absolutely. Yeah, why not? He was, he well, was why a not? smoker. You're Michael Moore. Nah, nah. He was a smoker. What do you mean a smoker? A smoker. He would come in there and Just knock this. Yeah. yeah. He would knock. He he punches. He was punching so hard, punching mm. through people. Yeah. You with know? that with that activity at that. But you never know. Class, you I'm not see. the type of guy who talks and say, "Well, what if?" Mm. You know, because you never know. You well, never why know. why didn't you? For people that don't know, you uh, George Foreman, mm -hmm. right? Um, big the big movies out right now. If you want to watch it, uh, Big George Foreman. Hey, I've been I gotta say I've been seeing a few guys in the gym going like this. I'm like, you watch the George Foreman movie? They're like, they're, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they're playing with that fucking ball. Yeah. I'm like, the hell? Uh, well, who do you think you are? Well, I, well, first, how, how do you how did you think you were portrayed in in the movie? 
I thought it was done very, very well. I like the movie a lot. I yeah. like the movie well. The movie yeah. was done right. It was behind George. You know, I didn't care about what they thought of me, you know. I thought that shot that when they did the the photos at the end and they're showing the 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 photos in the uh, credits and then the actual oh, yeah, footage yeah, that they yeah. took, that was very impressive. They yeah. they must have painstaking to to get those shots. Uh, but for people that don't know, you know, you're the heavyweight champion of the world. George Foreman uh, had come out of retirement, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Yep. Um, and you're you're winning. You're winning by some counts nine rounds to, to none. Yep. And then he goes one, two, one, two, one, two. It looks like he was kind of pulling your your guard down with that lead hand. Did you did you when you was going with those one twos, <laughs> what were you thinking? And was your corner yelling at you to get out of range because you had the fought the fight one or what? Uh, I had to fight one. Um, Teddy was telling me, just stay away. But I was the type of guy that I was a fighter. You know, I'm not going to run from nobody. You know, you want to fight, we're going to fight. I, I was that type. But if I should have been smarter and, you know, stayed on the outside. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's, it was meant to be. Things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I believe in. Mm. It was, and it, you know, it hey, made that high, by hindsight's a mother. We've been doing it. So I had a buddy, one of a great friend of the show, Christos Yagos, the Spartan. The Spartan. Uh, mm -hmm. We're out in Vegas. We were cornering him this weekend, and uh, fought a great fight the first round. Second round, thought if he if I get this takedown, I, I won the fight. I know I won the first. I know I secure this takedown. Fight's over. Gets caught in a choke, forcing the takedown. Three to one and, underdog. And, we've been doing and he it. had the kid and, on the heels. And we've been yeah had the kid rocked almost. Oh, first round, the first had round. him, had him. <sighs> it's brutal. And we've been doing playing that game all you know all weekend where it's like ah oh, if, if we were yeah if we had more pressure early you know what I mean you would have gotten your flow off oh, we were doing this and that it sucks. But anyway, shout out to Christos. Great kid. One of the, one of the best people, a person I've known for like a little over a year and a half, <sighs> mm -hmm. and become one of my best friends. Just great dude, class act all the way. So. Shout out, Chris. It's the quick. hardest thing about what you guys both do. You know, in, in the other sports that I played, you know, you give up a home run, you get the bat. You know, you you give up a, a bomb on on uh, on defense, your team takes the field on offense. You know, it's you, you can be winning the entire fight, and one two punches later, that's it. You hear, you, see you, in you six see, months. Yeah, you see how we're talking about it. A team sport to an individual yeah. sport. Yep. A lot of people don't talk about that. Yeah. That's totally different. Very much when, so. When it's in boxing, that's individual. When you're in that ring and you're fighting and you lose, that's on you. Mm. That's on you. But if you lose as a team, you know, it's not on nobody. It's on the team. It's almost the shared like experience. We can, right. yeah. yeah. It's not a, as serious. Not right. as serious. Exactly. It's all on, all on your shoulders. All right. on you. It's you. Not, it's not the New York Giants losing. Right. It's, and that's a lot know. of pressure. Over time, where say if you lose a fight, like man, what am I gonna do now? And you know, you get down on yourself. A lot yeah. of people get down. They don't pop up and like, well, come on, I'm gonna do something else now. Like when I lost, I came back and won that title again. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was in me to do that. Some people don't. That some people don't reach deep inside themselves to do that. Mm. Mm -mm. They what? don't do that. Hard, yeah. Why wasn't uh, why wasn't a, a, a Foreman rematched? I mean, you were winning the fight. It could, you know. Yeah. Well, normally there's rematch clause. Um, uh, what's that? George didn't want to take the uh, rematch. He didn't want to do it. Mm. So they end up having to pay me to step aside. And oh, that's how that so you happened. got paid not to fight. Yeah, he got paid not to fight. That's pretty good. That's something you could get behind. That's something I could get behind. <laughs> I could get behind sushi for breakfast and getting paid not to fight. Yeah. Now we're talking about diplomacy, gentlemen. Diplomacy. The, you uh, you I, know, I got a question for you. Yes, um, so some of my biggest influences in my life have been guys that I've met in the gym, you know, trainers, coaches, whatever you want to call them, like mm -hmm. been big mentors to me. I, you've had kind of the who's who in your career. Yep. You've had uh, Emmanuel Stewart. You've had Freddie Roach, you've had Teddy Atlas, you had the Duvas, right? Yep. Like you, what what are some of the you know some of the valuable things you learned from them? Like the the relationships you've had, anything? Yeah, you feel like? I've had great relationships with each each person, uh, each one of the trainers, especially uh, Emmanuel Stewart, because he treated everyone like family. Everyone. Love that. 
everybody like family. And he was always so personable that you can go and just talk to him. He can come, you can go up to him anytime. He was that guy. Uh, Teddy was a great guy. Uh, he was more of a philosopher. Um, the Benton, Georgie Benton, Lou Duva, you know, they was fighters. They wanted to get in there and go fight, you know. So, and uh, what is it? Uh, Freddie Roach, more of a boxer. So different styles of different people. So you take pieces from all exactly, those guys. Exactly, exactly right. What yep. do you when you say Teddy was a philosopher? What do you mean? What do you mean by that exactly? Because I, I know I hear when I hear him talk, he's very like he's very psychological, yep. which makes sense coming from you know Customato. That's you know a big part of him. Go you know? going back to those days, Teddy was taught being around being around a lot of people, so he picked up a lot of things from people, and he turned it into what he thought was going to be beneficial for him and make it better for the fighter. Oh, okay. yeah. Teddy, Teddy knows what he's doing. Big time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, and he was, he was when he trained you, he must have been, like, in his 20s or so? I don't know. Right. I don't I feel, I feel I know probably, he, he probably, came probably in there. Early, probably late 20s, late early 20s? 30s. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know he was, like, almost like a, like a, what do they call it, a wonderkin, where they, like, like he kind of got past the, the reins to, uh, from Cuss. So right. like it was like and you know he was he was at just out of like the golden gloves and they were like all right you're you're hurt you can't fight you train and he just right. like jumped head first into that because he uh, was with Cuss yeah so Cuss got him going yeah, yeah. And that was a time when Cuss was like he was like temporarily he was like kind of retired like half retired mm -hmm. half in there but still training some guys you know it was an inter interesting time man so, I always find that 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 stuff really interesting what are you gonna say Drew no well to that to that point is there any difference in the styles that causes confusion if you're going from different trainers and coaches or, or are you so confident in your kind of style and approach at that point that you're just taking a little bit of, of their input but you, you know you're in control of it well i was a southpaw being a southpaw most people didn't have the ability to fight southpaws they didn't want to fight southpaws mm -hmm. and um i was i always had that advantage because I knew that they didn't train the proper way. The only person who was smart enough to do it was Evander. Event when he fought me the second time, he went in there and he studied being a being a coming from a southpaw position. He studied me and he went and he went out there and phew, he did everything he was supposed to do. A lot of people don't do that, you know. Um, Evander's just Evander's the type of person that if he puts his mind to something, he does it. And and in boxing, if you were able to do that, with that, if, it's all about your mind. If you put your mind to do it, I did it. It's about imposing your will oh, on yeah. somebody else, really. Mm, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. What what is saying more like on in like uh, any particular thing? Where if you put if like he had it that. Uh, that like hyper focus and he'd put that he'd manifest that and create that whatever he decided he's like this is what i'm doing that that's a, that's the thing we talk about the untapped potential of the human mm -hmm. mind there's so much yeah. like if those people that have that strong mental and can really you know what i mean there's just, there's that's like me i have that like mental capability that if i say i'm going to do something done if i i'm going to stop drinking done if i'm going to stop smoking done if i say i'm going to do it i do it mm. you know do you Just believe in manifesting, like putting it out there in the universe and like, uh, you know? I'm a private guy. I don't need people all knowing my business. You don't need the universe knowing. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. You don't. No. Yeah. Because people are always going to talk. People are always going to talk. I don't care about what people talk about, but know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. you know? Do you think your, your private uh, demeanor is kind of why maybe you're not uh, as, I don't know, what would be the term, famous or well-known yes. as? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Because, I mean, your, your record stacks up with anybody from mm -hmm. the late 80s and the 90s. And I can't think of another Southpaw ch champ, heavyweight champ. Klitschko. Vladimir. Klitschko was? Klitschko. What about before you? What was the last one? I was the first. You were the first one? I was the first Southpaw heavyweight champion in the history of boxing. Wow, that's all right. That's not to saying. be I, not not so, to be in so, in uh, the Hall of Fame. So you're not in the Hall. So you're one of the only in, four guys. The 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 International Boxing Hall of Fame. Yes, yeah. I'm in Florida's Boxing Hall of Fame in Pennsylvania's, but not the big one. But it's fine. Wow. But Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti are. Put, we gotta make a push for well, that. Well, that's that's we got people for need what, to know. Though? For what? Why not? Because it's a museum and people deserve to know. 
But you know, yeah, now, it's now it's you're stories. It's history. But it's, now, yeah. now you're on slick and thick, so everybody's gonna know. So it's fine. Yeah. We're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna put a whole <laughs> new generation. <laughs> a whole new generation. Why do you want to go sit and, and give a speech in front of 17 people in Springfield when you got millions yeah. and pound millions of juggalos watching? There you go. <laughs> Said juggling. Is there anybody that you you wish you you uh, you would have fought during your time that you didn't get a chance to? Uh, no. How no. would you how would you have handled a guy like Lennox Lewis with that long jab or a Tyson Fury with that length? It just seems well pretty well, tough. See, I I brought this I put this on uh, social media the other day. Boxing needs a super heavyweight division. Amen. Why? Talk in our language. Yeah. Open, yes. open Amen. class. Yes. Amen. You need a super heavyweight division because as an amateur, you have light heavyweight. Uh, then you go to heavyweight. Then you have super heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Why not bring it into pros? Why would you have a cruiserweight division? It's 200 pounds. Okay, you go light heavyweight. You go junior heavyweight. And then you go to heavyweight. You know, 200 pounds up to 250, 250 and above mm -hmm. is a super heavyweight division. It doesn't make sense. Somebody six foot fighting a guy six seven, 83 inch reach compared to a 76 inch reach. Yeah, that's bullshit. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Why not have a super heavyweight division? Well, because Rocky Marciano didn't need to be six foot seven. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I think no, it, I, 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 I think it's going to benefit boxers and I think it's to benefit the sport. You yeah, want to see the biggest, be, baddest yeah. guys out there. There's I think for you know for MMA as well. We our cutoff is two sixty five. Yeah. So we have guys. I have teammates who missed heavyweight by not having made the weight class. You know what I mean? Because they got a cut from like two eighty, two ninety. Yeah. But they're that's they're a lot. they're an athlete. They're in shape. They're you know what I mean? It's right. not. But the, you know they. It cuts. It, it gets out of all these ex-football players who might want to get into combat sports. Mm -hmm. You know, guys whose who's, you know NFL career maybe went three, four years. They're still they're in their late twenties, right. and, and you know can pick up something else, either whether boxing or uh, MMA. Well, look at so Greg Hardy, all pro, mm -hmm. all pro NFL player, but you know he walks around at three fifteen. Yeah, he'd have a t he had a terrible time making two sixty five. Hey, look, Brock Lesnar <laughs> said, Brock Lesnar said, if I didn't have to cut to two sixty five, I'd have fought again. I mean, yeah. what what would that what would that have been worth to Dana White in the UFC to have Brock Lesnar headline two, three, four more? Super heavyweight Empire so MMA. MMA I'm saying soon. open open so class, baby. So in MMA, what's the heavyweight division? Two sixty five. So two two twenty five. Is it two two oh five? Or two yeah two oh six is light heavyweight. So then uh, any you know two oh seven to uh, two sixty five. Most guys around. Between that's a two, lot. Two, I know. It's, it's kind of weird. That's a lot. Well, that's why John it's, Jones, he took two years to put on 40 pounds, he said. Yeah. That was yeah. the idea. You know, you, you went from... It, it, it's just we're made different these days. This day and age, we're bigger people, bigger bone people. Mm -hmm. You have to have a different heavyweight division for bigger guys. That that It, it makes sense. And it's fun. It's fun. It Don't you want to see the big guys swinging yeah. and banging? Mm. You know? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like the cutoff either. I think, th I think that'll change in time. It's well, got to. It needs to change now because there's, there's big fights out there that can be made. Who, who in particular? Who are you thinking about? Well, look at the, you got a uh, Tyson Fury fighting Francis coming. In Gano, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great fight. Who y'all picking? Well, Fury. You, you think gano has got a shot? No, nah, not a shot. <laughs> not, not a shot. Not a chance. Not a not chance. Not a chance nah. whatsoever. Yeah. You, you Fury in, in boxing, Fury in uh, yeah. MMA. In exactly. Gano. Easy. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? They should That's have no to do brainer. one on one, right? They should have to do one. Speaking of that, what are your thoughts on Jake Paul? You think, you that's think, my that's my thoughts on it too. Yeah, whatever. You think <laughs> it's you think it's legit? These things are legit. He's a legit boxer. You think he he, he deserves his flowers? He, he has he has abilities to be a great boxer, a good boxer, not great, but a good boxer. I just I don't I don't follow that that type of stuff. No, you're not with all that noise. Yeah, I'm not. There's no disrespect going out to nobody like that. It's just that boxing and putting on. The boxing that I did was real. The boxing that they do, I don't think it's that real as they call it. When you say real, are you saying like predetermined, like the outcomes? Like it's not, it might not be uh, a full-on competition, 100%? That's, 
the, the, the guys, Kai and um, what's the other guy you just said? Uh, Jake Paul. Jake Paul, yeah. KSI, they're, you're talking about they're, KSI? They're, yeah, KSI. They're doing, their, they're doing a good job of getting themselves out there. But it's a little but more they're circus. Messi- they're, mer- they're messing up the game for boxers and MMA guys. How so? Because uh, me personally, why why are you going to get somebody like this who didn't come up the right way? Right. Doing it the right way that every, that every one of us did. But you're just going to get because you're famous and you're going to get people. I mean, good for you. You got people coming after you. You're making good money. That's good. But why? I just don't understand that that side of the the game. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, it's not, like it's, it's like not, the game has changed. It's not it's not real to me. Right, because they didn't come up the hard way. Because he's kind of like he just you know he did YouTube videos and then hopped and on. And he finessed himself to get into that pic to get to get where he is now. Right, he yeah. used his his other platform to then put himself on well, that. Well, let me right. play, let me play right. devil's advocate. It, it, and this could be completely false, but I, I think the prevailing thought from the general public is when you have a top boxing prospect, the promoters will give him 10 fights against people he, he knows he's going to beat to to kind of warm up or get used to stretching build out, him build him up. But also, mm-hmm. you know, so Jake Paul is kind of doing that same thing. He's fighting that caliber of fighter. And he's just doing it in front of millions of people. I, okay, I can see I can see it on that point where you're coming from. I'm just not a I'm not a fan. The purest uh, the purest thing I'm not is a, like, I'm not yeah. just not a fan. I don't I don't sit there and watch it or order it. If somebody's watching, I'm over their house, mm-hmm. I'll watch it. Mm-hmm. I'm it's, not going to buy it. Same. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not going to buy it. Gotcha. But no disrespect to those guys because they they're putting in work. For sure. You know. 100%. They're getting themselves in shape. Do you think it does more of a disservice rather than a service of bringing eyes and uh, <clears throat> you know a different audience to boxing? It brings different eyes to boxing compared to that. What do you mean? Like like him doing it, him th- being this YouTube guy. Him who? Jake. Okay. Jake Paul. Him go you know deciding to box and stuff, uh-huh. bringing bringing you know this a different audience that isn't a you know an audience of boxing purists. See, I I, f- I feel two ways on it. I feel one way it's gonna grow the popularity of combat sports and mm-hmm. boxing in particular for the younger but generation. But at the same time, it's bringing these fans that are a little, you know, I, I don't know if that's the fans you totally want. It's a, it's about the younger crowd now. I'm 55. I'm moving on out. It's a younger crowd now. It, if this this is the way they do it. Mm. This is the way the they're, they're bringing it. Yeah, the game has changed drastically. Yeah. Big time. To the point where, I mean, there was a massive, there was like a fight of the year almost every month, I feel like, in the 90s when I was growing oh, up. Oh, absolutely. Every weight class, and I can name you five yeah. fighters in every, I can't, I can't name you four fighters anymore, really. You can't name four boxers? I can name you, that's not true, I can in probably name seven. Classes. I can probably name seven, but I could have named you seven middleweights in the 90s. Yep. You know what I mean? I could have named you there. I mean, it seems like and and guys like guys you wouldn't yeah. even think like David Tua. David Tua was a bad mother sucker, dude. Like David you knocked Tua. Knocked me out. Da- David Tua was a bad man, dude. Yeah, People don't he realize. Could punch. Yeah. David like sure can. and you don't think of David Tua like short fucking compact. Samoan. Yeah. yeah. Fucking strong. Beats. Dude, I mean, there was who was that guy who was all looked all juiced out of his mind? That Polish dude who was like always pitting guys in the nuts. Galata? Galata. Andrew Galata. Galata. Yeah. You know, like Galata, it feels like would be like a top three guy today. You know, like it's like these guys were, you guys were. It was I mean, deep. It was a deep debate. Yeah, I mean, dude, people don't yeah. even, people don't remember like Riddick Bo. What Riddick Bo did to people, man. Like, I think about if you have a super heavyweight division now. Yeah. Compared yeah. to a mm-hmm. junior heavyweight or yeah, junior heavyweight division. Well, I also, too. if I remember correctly, your fight against Foreman was the second largest weight differential in in heavyweight history at that time. Uh, I don't know. I think it was. Primo Carnera outweighed somebody by like 70 pounds. Oh, yeah. He was a big guy. Yeah. And then I think George. We were talking about Primo a couple episodes yeah, ago. Yeah, Primo. Primo. Big guy. Yeah. 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 He was a big man. And then B- Big George and you, I think, was, uh, you know, 40 pounds, I think it was. Yeah, I was 222, and he was 267, I believe. 